This is problem number 9 from section 2.6. In this problem it says determine the domain and range of the function. Use various limits to find the, to find the range. Well, what's the domain of this function going to be? Well, because it's an x squared on the bottom and an x squared on the top, which would be a quadratic, uh, although this is irrational here, um, the, the key is, is that when we square a number, we're always getting positive numbers. So because we're squaring a number, our rational function is never going to have a domain restriction because this is always going to be positive and we're always adding 1. So we can essentially plug in any number we want in for x, and we're never going to get a division of 0 in the denominator. So that's going to be what our domain is. So our domain is simply any number between negative infinity and infinity. Now we need to find the range value. The range value, they say, use various limits to find it. Well, typically when you look at a, a problem, you want to you wanna figure out uh, when, uh, what is the function doing as it goes towards infinity, what's the function doing as it goes towards negative infinity, and what's it doing kind of in the middle, and usually I'll try to, try to go with what's happening at zero, just to kind of start, and we'll see what we get here. So let's do the limit as we'll go limit as x approaches infinity. And the other thing to keep in mind is this 8 is going to be just kind of constant for this, uh, for this function. Like we're going we're gonna to take something and add 8 to it. So I'm only going to look at this rational piece of the function when I do the limit. Because I want to know what is, this, what is this rational piece equaling as we approach infinity. I know that's 8. So 7x squared over x squared plus 1. That's one thing I'm going to look at. And I'm going to do the limit as x approaches negative infinity for that function. And then I'm also going to do the limit as x approaches 0 for this function. Well, let's use uh, our rule that we kind of came up with, or not a rule, but our limit that we came up with earlier, which is limit as x approaches infinity. For 1 over x, we know equals 0. So we're going to try and get this uh, rational function to have some 1 over x's in it. So we're going to multiply the top by 1 over x squared and the bottom by 1 over x squared. That's going to give you 7 on top over, on the bottom you end up with 1 plus 1 over x squared. This is going to give you 0 when you take the limit of it, so you end up with 7 over 1 plus 0, which means you end up with 7 for your limit as x approaches infinity. So as x approaches infinity, you end up with 7. Now if we do the exact same thing here, this just leads to 7 over 1 plus 1 over x squared. And when we plug in negative infinity, we, we know that the limit as x approaches infinity, whether it be positive or negative, for 1 over x, is zero. So this is still going to be zero, so I end up with 7 over 1 plus zero, which is 7. So as we approach either infinity or negative infinity, we're getting 7 as our limit, meaning this function here, or this rational, is approaching 7. Well, if we think about that, then that means if this is approaching 7, 8 plus 7 is 15, so it's a technically this whole why or this whole function is approaching 15 in that case. We're going to take the limit as x approaches 0 for this. <clears throat> I can directly substitute it, so it's 7, 0 squared over 0 squared plus 1, which gives you 7 over 1, oh, not 7 over 1, 0 squared times 7, that's 0 over 1, which is 0. Okay, so I'm assuming because this is a quadratic on the bottom, right, any number that you're going to have above zero is going to make the denominator larger. And uh, any uh, and the same thing on top is going to make this, this is going to be larger as well. So if you use one or negative one or two or negative two, this number becomes larger as well. So zero is kind of our bottoming out part for this rational. So because these limits give you 7 and this limit as you approach 0 gives you 
zero here. That means our range is really going from, if I use zero for that, that means we're getting close to eight, but we're not exactly equaling it because it never equals it, it's just getting close. And then when we plug in seven for this, you know, this limit, we got eight plus seven, which means 15 is the largest number, but we can't equal it. So our range is going to go from eight to 15 because our limits are gonna straddle between zero and seven. Hope that makes sense.